Sarah better watch out. Ooh, nice form, but a little rough on the landing. He may have to settle for the bronze. <laughs> These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm V Infuso, and I'm here once again bringing you another saga. These original videos have been scrubbed from YouTube due to copyright issues, amongst other things. So I figured I'd put these together and upload it as one video rather than trying to milk it for all it's worth. This way you guys get the full narrative here, and you don't have to go to three or four different videos. And being that this is a full saga, I'd ask everyone to hold their comments until the end. So with that being said, this is the Mickey Knuckles Saga. White trash, all right? Take a look at yourself. You can't do backflips. You don't know karate. You're white trash. What you're this is? Oh my God! What the fuck is that, bro? Jay, what the fuck is that? What the hell is it? What the fuck is that? We're seeing some shit we ain't never seen before, kid. Oh my God, man! We are seeing some shit we ain't never seen before. What is that fucking thing? Two. That thing looks hurt. That thing is big, Jay. Hey, look at this oh fucking my thing. Oh my God! Look at this thing. <laughs> Is that a poop rat? Is that a f***ing poop rat? These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Mickey Knuckles. I'm just gonna stop right there and call it a day. But I won't. Probably because I hate myself and I want to die. Stop! Don't! Hey there, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior, V Infuso, and uh... Oh! And you're just gonna have to deal with this because I'm not gonna change the logo because it's gonna come back in two months. So until then, get over your petty ass self, alright? Shut the fuck up! I'm here with another wrestling related review just in time for WrestleMania. Now, Mickey Knuckles is a former TNA wrestler and her run was quite legendary. By which I mean, uh, it was sort of like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot because, you know, uh, really, who, who's seen it? It's pure speculation. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Now, first off, no big girl jokes. She's a little bit bigger, and in an industry that demands physical perfection, the fact that she's gotten over anywhere is something to be applauded, not mocked. Also, those jokes are too cheap and easy. Just like Mickey Knuckles. Oh! So, with that being said, let's dig a little deeper. So, get ready to put on a condom and call your doctor anyway. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Man, I remember the first time that I saw Mickey Knuckles. I mean, she, she looked like some kind of trailer park trash that belonged on Jerry Springer. Because she was. Please meet Mickey. Oh, uh, perfect for our show. But you know what, that's not a fair assessment because everybody knows that your personal life has no effect on your professional life. Isn't that right, Ruboy Riley and Chris Benoit? Now, while I don't have time to cover Mickey's entire <clears throat> illustrious career. I will, however, take a look at some of her highlights. In 2006, her scheduled opponent was replaced by relative unknown BB Walls. And how'd that go? Oh, hold on. oh, this is gonna hurt like hell. Oh, oh my god! So, so not good? So, so not good then? She did, however, have this to say after some time. I, I was very young, and, and being a very young person, uh, and you know, especially when you have your trainer yelling at you from halfway across the gymnasium screaming, you better kill her, da 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 You know, it, it's a lot of pressure on you, because, you know, I don't know if anybody's been yelled at by Ian Rotten, but it's not nice. Oh, boo-hoo! Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Maybe that's a bad example. You know, let's, let's move on. Let's move on to the next thing. I'm sure we'll find something. And here she is wrestling the charismatic, talented, and here she is wrestling her trainer 
end. And here she is wrestling the guy that trained her. The... the Ian Rodden. Yes, she is. Oh, thumb deck bat right in the head. We talked about a staple down there. How about an army of thumbtacks? I tried to outdo one another in this madness. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 100 out of 100. Best. Here's a misconception about wrestling that some people on the inside still don't even know. I'm going to let you in on it. I'm going to let you in on the secret. Just between us. Blood does not equate to quality. Oh! You piece of shit! I mean, if it did, that means that my time spent at the ring were five star matches. Tornado DDT from the top row! Oh, it hit the chain! It hit the chain! Oh my goodness! Oh, you see the blood pouring out of that! Look at that face! 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100. Uh, but, but, but they weren't. They were backyard wrestling. In, in, in an actual wrestling ring. And speaking of backyard wrestling in an actual wrestling ring, let's play a game. I'm gonna show you a few clips, and it's up to you to figure out which ones are professional and which ones are people playing pretend. Right and going right for the thumbtacks on the bare feet! <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. In my wars at ringside, I have stepped on one a time or two, but no. Wearing those pointy thumbtacks in the face, but now. All going for the top. Did you figure it out? Because I haven't either. But that's all right. And you know what? I'll tell you why. Because Mickey is not actually a. She's an enforcer. She, she's she's a silent protector of professional wrestling. This is bullshit. Get the bricks. Why? Just look at what she does to people who don't belong in the ring. Dangerous situations they can be in these matches. Belly to belly, all he lands on the ladder. One, two, three. Oh! Oh! I mean, don't get me wrong. Look, uh, it, it's clear that this guy, Mike, had no idea what he was doing and probably did not belong anywhere near an actual ring, unless it was to be trained in one. But, but, but do you know who else probably doesn't belong anywhere near an actual wrestling ring? Ian fucking Rotten. Where were you to put an ass whipping on his no selling, no running, pace myself around the ring like a turtle taking a shit, making everybody who's ever stepped foot in the industry look bad? Oh, gee, I never thought of it like that. Ian Rotten only has a career because Paul Heyman had an obsession with polishing dog shit. I mean, who else could possibly make Ian Rotten seem tolerable? Even in small doses, that's quite a challenge. Ian Rotten got a job because the roster had a low body count. And even with that being said, do you know what Ian Ron is synonymous for during his time in ECW? 
being there. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Mickey's defense has always been, to my knowledge, that she did what she did because Mike didn't sell and shouldn't have been near a ring. Okay. Well, if he didn't belong near a ring, maybe he shouldn't have been booked to be in one. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Only weeks after her assault on Mike Levy, Mike Levy, what? I, I don't give a fuck, actually. After her assault on Mike, and right as she jumps down here, you can see her hit the hidden layer of karma right above the floor. Man, she hasn't taken a tumble like this since the ugly tree, but at least then she had all those branches to break her fall. Say goodbye to your wrestling career and hello to three-legged races with Sid Vicious because... Oh, Could have blown my out her leg name. is fucked! My leg is fucked! My leg is fucked! My leg is fucked! Bo ho bo ho bo ho bo ho bo ho It's taking it real hard. Guys, 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 it's fine. Look, it's important that we remember that this wouldn't have happened if she learned to sell. Well, I'm the social injustice warrior, and all in all, when I think of Mickey Knuckles, the first word that comes to mind is, um... Guns, 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 guns. If that's Mickey, guns. He talked to his friend Scotty and, and asked him, you know, will you take care of her while I'm gone? Eventually, uh, one day, we slept together. Oh, this is gonna hurt like hell. Oh my God! Oh! Class. Class. Definitely. Definitely class. In all seriousness, in subsequent interviews, did I even say that right? I don't give a fuck if I did or I didn't. I can write better than I can speak sometimes. And sometimes I can speak better than I write. It's a complex life I lead. In recent interviews... Oh, anybody's been yelled at by Ian Rotten, but it's not nice. It's not pretty. Nobody ever wants to... And I'm one of these people, I don't like to cause ripples in anybody else's water. I don't like people to be mad at me, so I try to keep everything as calm as possible. When he's yelling at me, and the fans can see what she's doing, and I'm just thinking that as she's trying to be tough, and as young as I was, I took that the wrong way as I thought she was being disrespectful. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Mickey seems to have calmed down outside the wrestling ring and does seem relatively normal and, dare I say, less shitty? Maybe she was manipulated and was following a dirt bag. Or maybe she just found somebody new to blame. I don't know personally. So in conclusion, I honestly can't even tell the two of you apart half the time because I don't go by height or age, I go by amount of pain in my ass, which makes you both identical. All right, everything resolved? Everybody nice and certain about their position in my world? <laughs> Mickey Knuckles, that's a hell of a resume you got there. <laughs> I guess the surprise is out, right? You're a cunt. You're a cunt. You are a cunt. Sarah better watch out. <gasps> oh, damn.
Okay. All right. Excellent. 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 Woo! Do it again. In time. No, no. In time. <laughs> Lady, you're all right. I know that we started out as fun, but after that courageous act, maybe someday we could become friends. You shut up. You have talked enough. Shh. Uh, I'm Social Justice Warrior V. Infuso, and here with me, as always, is Mr. No Limits, uh, Chris Banks. We're here waiting for our special guest. Mickey Knuckles has actually joined us right now. How's it going, Mickey? That's pretty well, pretty good. How are you? Can't complain. Can't complain. It's been a while. We've been uh, we've been trying to get this together. Surprised that we actually finally did. Thank you for stopping by. No problem, sir. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, this is not the first time that you were watching this video, right? Uh, actually, I really don't watch things I'm in. I don't watch any matches I do or anything like that. Well, no, but I mean, I you, uh, you come first time around. Huh? No, but you uh you left a comment in the comment section the first time. Right? Oh yeah, somebody had uh, has sent me a, a screenshot of all the messages and stuff, and I thought it was it was entertaining. I thought that video was amazing. <laughs> I fucking love that video. Above the floor, man, she hasn't taken a tumble like this since the ugly tree. But at least then she had all those branches to break her fall. Say goodbye to your wrestling career and hello to three-legged races with Sid Vicious because the one out thing is fucked. <laughs> My leg was fucked. Yeah, you know what? I I've actually I I've seen people like go through shit like that too, and like you had to immediately went into shock, like as soon as you connected with that floor. Um, actually, no. Uh, when I connected, I felt a warm pop in my leg, and I was praying it was just my hip. Um, it wasn't until I tried to roll away from Sarah to figure out what I had done wrong that my leg, like, bowed like a rainbow or a spaghetti. And that's when, like, I started I started feeling the blood drain from my body. I started getting really cold, um, and I felt like I was getting ready to go into shock. And I did go into shock shortly after that video cut off, I believe. Thank God Daphne Jesus. was there. She helped me out throughout it. So maybe that spot not not worth it. Not at the end, not worth it. Mm, I didn't want to dive. That's what nobody understands. I don't dive. the The biggest dive I've ever done is probably just the, the suicide dive through the ropes. I I don't dive. And what had happened was when Ian Rotten booked that card, he put me and Sarah Del Rey as the main event of the show mm -hmm. and right before our match somebody had done a dive off that stage and it was in strongly insisted by ian that uh, a dive was done because we were the main event of an all guy card and he felt like that was necessary to dignify the fact that there was a female main event of his card so for maybe about five minutes i told him i really didn't want to do the dive at the end of it I, I was told I had to do the dive, and when I went to go do the dive, I, I, I care about people I wrestle with, this, including Sarah Del Rey. She was a, a good friend, um, a great mentor to a point, and when I dove, I'm a big girl. I'm not skinny. I've never been small. I'm not going to be small, um, and through the air, I, I did not want to land on her fully, 
So when I put down my legs to try to support some of it, and I didn't know I had a previous fracture in my femur at the time from uh, TNA. So it was just a perfect storm. Ultimately, nobody wants to say no to doing like a spot, especially when like it's being asked of you by like the promoter or you know, somebody in charge. You don't ever want to tell them no. But in the same in the same respect, you, you really shouldn't be doing anything, you know. Oh, I definitely wasn't you, comfortable. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell people, I tell anybody, especially greenhorns, um, if they're on a show and, and they don't feel comfortable doing something, it is okay for you to go, you know what? I'm just not really comfortable doing that. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt anybody else. Um, and that's, mm. and that's hindsight being 2020. I really wish I would have insisted on not doing the dive, but, um, breaking my femur was probably the best thing to ever happen to me. So I don't know. That is not a sentence that I would ever think I'd hear a human being say. So could you uh, a little bit? The, um, I was in a bad place with um, – uh, how do I explain it? No, I'm just going to be blunt. Um, I was living since maybe about 20 or so. Uh, I became homeless while I was wrestling. I had a couple different jobs. I had a – apartment with my boyfriend we split up and um we both forfeited the apartment because i couldn't make the payments on my own so i was homeless and i was working two jobs plus showing up to wrestling training plus going to the shows on the weekends to set up and tear down for iwa and ian's wife told me i can come stay with them for a little bit um until i got back on my feet well it seemed like when i moved in there um we would be out of town for shows i'd have to be back to work the next day and something would always happen to where we would always end up staying longer. Um, and because Ian Rott was the promoter, Ian Rott was the boss, you don't argue with the boss. And I ended up losing those two jobs because I kept missing work. And so that put me in a worse spot because now I'm living in a place with, um, you know, Ian Rott and his wife and his kids um, and pitching in to help her build because something would get turned off or something would happen. And I would feel really bad because I lived there to at least pitch it and, and help, you know, and when I lost a few jobs, I was pretty much indebted to IWA and Ian Rotten. So I would go wrestle these shows and my paydays would go to, to Ian and I would wrestle for Ian and never got paid there because it was pretty much, I was wrestling for room and board. And this went on for many years. I I was a very gullible, naive child. I grew up in a very small town. Um, I didn't really have a family of my own. And, and I got sucked into this world where I thought I was part of a family. And I felt like I, I was part of the family. And then every day was something to break me down and bury me. And I didn't see it as, as I should have saw it. I saw it through rose colored glasses. Maybe I was this big piece of shit. I was getting told I was every day and, you know, I wasn't doing enough. And, that led me to even when I broke my femur and I found out it was still broke after the first surgery, I still wrestled because I, I was told that I needed to wrestle to make money because I needed to help and pitch in on bills. Um, and it, I hear people refer to him all the time as this, but Ian Rotten truly is the Charles Manson of wrestling. He can, he can suck people in and, and make them feel like they're a part of something and then break them down at the same time as making them depend on him. And um, it took me many years to see that. And if I didn't break my leg, which is what I was getting to, if I didn't break my leg, I would have never saw it for what it really was. I mean, I was wrestling on a broken femur and immense pain um, because somebody who had a gambling problem couldn't take the money that we would make towards the bill. So we were always getting in jeopardy of losing things and getting things shut off. And um, eventually one night, shit happened. Um, it forced me to leave IWA and uh, that family for all for good, at least in the thought of my mind, um, until many years later when I was like, all right, we'll, we'll forgive and let, you know, let everything go. And then it just, he's not going to change. He's, it is what it is. So, you see, now you but yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy I broke my femur. Otherwise I would have never left. I would have continued to be used and, and the money taken and, and everything else. So. Well, uh, it was my stupidity, but still. Sorry, well, I mean, play with my dog. <laughs> it, oh, he's adorable. Uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a combination. Oh, uh, would you like to meet her? 
Her name is Luna Vachon. Say hi, honey. You named your dog so. Luna Vachon? Yes, she's just as crazy, too. So. See, I I think it would only be acceptable if she had like a weird marking, like like right by her, like the side of her face. You know what? I think that would be borderline animal abuse. So I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. But still. Yeah, don't don't listen to me. That's probably not okay. <laughs> I've um, already got enough heat on my ass for shit. <laughs> you described Ian Ron as the is like uh, Charles Manson wrestling, and I've heard that term used uh, before on Paul Heyman actually, and that I get. Because, like, Paul Heyman's charismatic. Like, he's a likable, like, he could talk you into something. It's, but, mm-hmm. Ian Ron, that's... I, if, I don't here, here, here's what it is with Ian. Have you ever been in high school and you see, like, for me, I wasn't part of the cool kids. I, I hung out with, with people who played Dungeons and Dragons and girls who, you know, acted just like guys that turned out later to be, you know, gay, but whatever. And well, um, hung out with the real cool. If you've been in high school, though, and wanted to be part of the cool kids, the popular kids, because everybody seemed to flock around these people. And you felt like you were a better person because you were around them. And that's how he makes you feel. Um, especially when he starts talking about his old ECW days and stuff. And you get these green kids that are just in awe. Yeah. Because they hear the letter BCW and then they cream their pants. Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's interesting. It's really interesting. You probably get this question a million times. Uh-huh. I'm a fan of the incident. Can we get the backstory of the Mike Levy incident? I've always. Yeah, that. sure. That's fine. Um, okay, so. Every year at Queen of the Death match, we always had girls cancel out for one reason or another. And I think it's mostly because when it got closer to Queen, they got more nervous about the stipulations and they just decided they didn't want to do it, which is fine. But we would always have backups. And that particular year, um, hold on one second. That particular year, we had one too many girls back out. We had a couple girls back out because one of them got a boob job about a month prior to that, knowing that they were booked, but whatever. The other one got a new tattoo. Um, another girl said she just didn't feel like doing it anymore. So, anyways, um, and what? Sorry, I came to work. My pitch just came in. Huh? This I just I just love that in wrestling. It's basically like, sorry, I can't come to work. My tits just came in. Exactly. <laughs> and so $5,000 puberty. Anyways. And so uh, Tank was there and I had wrestled Tank at King of the Death match. And so he had pitched an idea. Maybe he puts himself in queen against me to retaliate for what I did to him. And I was all for that. But Mike Byrne, who run Smart Mark video, came to Ian uh, when we were talking about it and said, no, there's this guy here named Mike Levy. He's an internet sensation. He's a deathmatch guy from North Carolina. Um, Ian did ask him if he was trained, and Mike and uh, Mike Burns said, yeah. And so Ian's like, okay, we'll call him back here. This guy had bought his, tic- his airplane ticket, came to the show, um, had a hotel room and everything else, paid for the tickets to be in Queen. And so Ian called him back there, he said, and he gave him his money back, which was crazy. And then he said um, – do you want to be in queen of the death match? And he explained the situation and Mike told him, yeah. And he goes, do you know what a squash is? And Mike Levy told him, of course. And he said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We just need you to fill a spot so that Mickey can go to the next round. And he said, okay, well, we got out there and Mike Levy punched, like uh, we went to lock up or whatever. And he punched me in the face. So, or no, he had, sorry, I'm confused. He headbutted me in the eye, and it was right above the eye. And you hear me say, no, stop, please, whatever. And he didn't stop. So then I punched him in the face. He hit me in the face. We proceeded to go around the mat. There's a couple of times I got a little irritated and frustrated, so I walked away. Walked away. And then he would pop right back up, so then I would go back over. And then the finish, um, I didn't feel comfortable throwing him off the top by himself. So instead, with the body-to-body, I went with him and rotated him around to land on this ladder, and then I went in the back. Well, I'm in the back um, trying to get this barb out of my finger. And they come out and they said, Ian wants your ringside. And I was like, no, it's not a good idea. You know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get ready for the next match. I'm not going. And then um, I heard some commotion where by the time I walked around the corner, everything had already been done. And, you know, they were coming back. And I still didn't know what was going on. So I saw the video. 
Um, and then Ian tried to claim that it was because it was part of a storyline or something um, to do with the insane clown posse and this, that, the other. Now, if you believe that, it's whatever. But I never knew about the storyline before that incident happened. Um, and I still get blamed for what the, the guys did to them afterwards. Pondo, um, Pondo didn't hurt him at all. Pondo, you know, did his normal Pondo stuff. And Tank broke his ankle. I don't know. He said he broke his ankle because he tried to hit and pop off and end up rolling his ankle real bad and, and breaking it. And then um, the Devin Moore thing was a little stiff. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I don't know if he meant to do it like that or what. And I forget what else. Oh, the John Calvin thing was ridiculously stupid. Um, and a couple other things, but I had nothing to do with. I didn't even know the aftermath was going on. I knew he called no, me no, outside, and I wasn't even there. I was in the locker room trying. Like I said, I had got a piece of the barbed wire uh, stuck in my thumb, and I was trying to get it out. Um, and then evaluate was because they had to cut that open, the little knot that developed because it was just too much pressure. And uh, the next day, I looked like the elephant man. I looked uglier than I do normally. And um, but you know. It was fine. I mean, you probably don't look so great with a couple <clears throat> knots in your head. Otherwise, you look fine. I don't think anybody looks – well, I take that back. There's right. a couple guys I mean, that probably I pull mean, it off. I mean, but he was – you have to give it to Mike Levy. He was smart. He took that that short thing, that thing right there, and 15 minutes of fame or whatever you want to call it, and he stretched it out. So he is incredibly smart to be able to do that. And when it was dying down, he created another video and tagged me in it. I thought it was funny. It was hysterical. I've got a weird sense of humor. I think weird things are funny. And- uh, yeah, I'm the same. I, I always appreciate that video. I always have. And, like, um, yeah. I, I, I heard from, like, fucking, well, I read. I shouldn't say I heard. I read from, like, others, like, uh, uh, like different stories about the incident. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm not one to listen to fucking wrestling rumors or gossip. Like, that's not my style. I'd rather just ask the person himself. That's why, I, now that I had you here, I finally got the fucking question answered. There you go. So well, you that's so what happened. That. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, you know, it's really weird how much of that they, like, put on you when you weren't even there for most of it. Like, the majority of his ass beating was at the hands of everyone else. But mm-hmm. No, during the match, though, I like how, like, you can see, like, like you can see whether it's a work or not, she's getting frustrated and laying it in. But that's oh, yeah, no, the that... point of wrestling. You're supposed to question, yo, is this really happening? I love that. <laughs> now, I do know, and I don't know what this worth, and, and this is something nobody, like very few people know except for the people who were there. I do know after that, after that show, Mike Levy went back to his hotel room, cleaned up, came back, paid to get in King of the Death match that night, and then stayed afterwards and helped me clean up the mess outside and then went into the bowling alley and hung out with most of the wrestlers. Oh, that's cool. Like somebody called the police department on it. And because of that right there, like that's why they dropped the investigation because he came back. He paid to watch the show that night, even though Patty said she told him he didn't have to, he still paid. And then stayed afterwards and helped me clean. Like, I didn't even ask him to help me. He just grabbed a broom and started helping me clean. It. And then went inside and had beers with the other guys. He so, saw a broom in your hand. He wasn't trying to get his ass whipped no more. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. No. Uh, so I would feel like if somebody was in fear of their life, they probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I, um, I, I shook his hand after the match and I was like, I, I questioned a couple of his, his things. I was like, I thought you knew what a squash was. And he's like, I do. And I was like, okay, so what happened? And I talked to him about it and questioned him because I wanted to understand where he was coming from. If, if it was really supposed to be, if he really didn't like me or something and, you know, he just wanted to, to fight, that was fine. Um, but I always question, I, I'm not very shy. I'm a pretty blunt person in wrestling. Um, and I'm one of those people, I don't have a filter. So if I feel like something mm-hmm. is done to me wrong or if I feel like something was off, I, I do question people about it and talk to them about it. And now I've got a couple, I've got bigger balls to where now if I, somebody tells me I need to do something and if I don't feel comfortable, I won't do it. So, I hear that. you know, you live and learn. So who called the police on it? Was, was it? was it Mike or was it a different, like, was it an, another party? What do you mean? Well, you said the cops got called. I don't know. They never, because because it was unanimous. 
Um, they never told us. And I, I, I didn't even get to talk to them one on one. It was they called the house and spoke to Ian and told them that there was an investigation, but that they found no need to continue it. And they were dropping the investigation. Um, and that was all I heard of it. Um, I had heard rumors on the Internet about how people called the cops and, and everything else. But uh, I don't know who started that. Well, that's actually, you know, that's actually a good segue because from one incident to another, uh, do you remember wrestling somebody uh, who went by the name of BB Walls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Pondo's favorite thing to bring up. <laughs> oh, I, I got to hear about this. Is it that bad? I can tell by the laugh. It's that it's bad. so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> Okay, it was another Queen of the Death match. It was the death match tournament that Lefisto uh, and I went to the finals. <laughs> and it was a round robin tournament, which sucked because that meant more matches. And I was already doing double death that weekend, plus so this. For the There's... listeners listening and the people in the chat room, can you explain to them what a round robin uh, match is? You want me to explain? If you don't yeah. mind, just like, yeah, just like. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Um, a round robin is okay. So we had fewer than than what we needed, girls, and it's basically like <sighs> I don't know how to explain it to people. Fill in the rest Shit. of the cocks, pretty much. Yes, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Google it's a, it. It's a video Friday night. So Just pause this video and Google it. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, it, but it ended up leading to like I think I wrestled seven times in that tournament. And the finals being me, me and LaFesta were dead at the end of it. But um, I wrestled. That, that was starting to match off with a bloody face. Yeah, that's the, that's, yeah. Well, here's uh, what happened. Is, okay, is so this the video that we're watching as she's explaining? Yes, yes. Okay. I'll explain it as we're watching. Hold on. Oh, God. Let it come back. Let it come back to me. Um, <laughs> okay, so BB Walls was being trained by another wrestler that was there. I can't remember which one. And uh, in the beginning, everything was fine. Until I realized that she wasn't, I wasn't laying anything in really. And I was, I was trying to work with her as much as possible. But then I realized she, she, she wasn't really cooperating and she was kind of not selling, no selling not yeah. selling at all, like yeah. at all. And, and from the back of the room, I could hear Ian Rotten screaming at me. You better, you better fucking hit her. You better fucking kill her. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, Oh God. Um, and I wasn't mad at this broad. I wasn't angry with this broad. I was trying, like, I kept talking to her about this whole thing. I'm like, are you going to sell? Or, or what are we doing here? Are, are you she mad at possessed. Yeah. She's just like staring at you, not even reacting. She does. She, she just, it's almost creepy. Yes, now it's just mention it, but whatever. And um, <laughs> I gave her the barbed wire bat. But... I gave her the barbed wire bat. And I told her, I said, you know hit me wherever and she ended up hitting me in the face twice with the barbar bat and the second time it ripped out a little piece of my chin and um i just uh, i i ended it really quickly after that there wasn't yeah. much i could do yeah. i found out later she was oh, pregnant and wrestling oh shit um so well, that made me her, her. She fucking looked at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I, went, I really didn't want to, I wasn't mad enough at her to waylay her. I didn't want to waylay her or, or, or anything oh. like that. I was trying to work with her and I was exhausted anyways, because we had so many matches that weekend. And I was like, ah, this is, this is so after, bad. It was after terrible. The second no sell, I would I would have started shooting. Like it's so much better. I know. Than that. Like, I and I've like, heard that from other wrestlers. Like they, they get on to me about it and they're like, Mickey Knuckles is so soft and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, it's just it's supposed to be wrestling, you know. I know we're supposed to hit each other and stuff, but the the point of especially deathmatch wrestling is you walk away from it. You're not supposed to suffer severe injuries and, and everything else, but we do and I was trying. I was trying so hard. Oh, no. You can see you started to get stiff. After that headbutt no so you fucking Ooh, and, Oh, and the, suplex, the suplex is going wrong with that. Oh, she's... No, nope, she just she's, kept setting down. <laughs> oh, what like, are you doing? It's like, you, like, that's literally the opposite of what I need you to do right now. Exactly. <laughs> like, total exactly. I just got so upset. I was like, what are you doing? And then, and then I went to, I went to, I kept telling her to sit up so I can do the, cause I do a shining Fawada and I kept telling her as I'm putting it down there, sit up and, and turn your forehead into it. 
she would not do anything I asked her to do. I was like, fuck me. <laughs> so I just fucking, I just I was like, oh, it is what it is. I'm done. I'm over it. I was so mad. I think I, I took a Did bat and swung it because I was mad. So. There's a replay. Oh, shit. Yeah, you kicked the fucking <laughs> bat in her face. Holy I told shit. you, Ponto, Ponto loves to, to remind me of this shit. I, I, yeah, he's such a friend. <laughs> Well, I mean, the entire like front row right there felt it too. Apparently, there's, because there's been, another a newer match you don't know about. Oh, oh which, which one? Know about this? There's a match that I'm wrestling Shauna Reed and Melissa Bangkok, and there's a backstory behind that. Oh, this broad. Is this online so, as well? It it might be because it was the most requested match for for the two weeks following it. Um, so so Shauna Reed's a good kid. She's trained by Cody Hawk. Um, she's really respectful. She's got really good talent. I think she's really going to do do stuff in this in this world. But uh, Melissa Bangkok is one of those girls who I guess okay. So in high school, I'm referring back to high school. In high school, the popular girls always have that one not so pretty friend to make them, you know. Yeah, make them feel better. Yeah, <laughs> I think she was one of them because she has an attitude and a chip on her shoulder because she thinks she's hotter than she is, and that everybody just wants to fuck her. And so the first time I met this girl, and this was probably about three or four months ago, the first time I met this girl, she comes up to me, has no idea who I am, which is fine, and she's like, "Hi, my name is Melissa Bangkok." Um, I hit it really hard, okay? Like, super hard. So, try not to uh, complain when I hit you. And, wh- and what's your name? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I said, she okay. You your name was? Wait, no, huh? I the question. She asked you what your name was? Yeah, she had no idea that we were wrestling each other. She had no idea who I was. Nothing. I was like, okay. Then she proceeds to tell me a story about how she grew up in Ohio and how um, she, she was in school with Randy Orton and John Cena. What the fuck? They're, they were nowhere near Ohio, from what I understand. And so when I asked her about the Chris brothers, she had no clue who those guys were. If you're from Ohio, you know who the Chris brothers are. It's I just you. I guarantee you that she literally said Ohio and John Cena and Orton because Ohio Valley Wrestling. I swear to God, I guarantee you that's <laughs> I, I you probably. Not, but then she was the subject. But I shit you not. I had somebody at a show in Pennsylvania. I had this uh-huh. guy come up to me. And told me that her and her husband were telling me, me and my friend Scotty Priest, her husband was telling us about how they went to a family reunion and found out that they're related to Kane and Undertaker. <laughs> I they swear not really. <laughs> I, I swear to God. I'm like, I'm very oh, the funny shit we so, hear. Because we were down in the locker room and the promoter comes down. I think he did this as a rib on me on the second match after she had talked so much shit the first time. Uh, the promoter comes down there as I get there. He's like, oh, I'm going to put you all on main. They're three-way on main. So the whole show, I have to hear this broad run her mouth. And she's, I'm taping up my knee because I, uh, on my bad leg, I had an ACL repair issue. Um, and they had to go in, do a surgery, put a cadaver tissue in there. I have a torn MCL or a torn medial meniscus, meniscus sorry, and um, a sprained MCL. And so I tape up my knee now because – you know, it's, it's a damaged knee. And as I'm taping up my knee, she goes, oh, my God. I think if I got that old or if I uh, was hurting like that, I think I would quit wrestling. Seriously, I put myself out of the misery. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, it's like, bitch, you just put I'm yourself old now. <laughs> And then she just kept on like my husband was downstairs. He's a wrestler, too. And he was getting mm-hmm. changed. And he bent over and she goes, oh, my God, he's got a nice ass. So I tried to be. You know, I was trying to, to be calm about it. And I said, yeah, that's why I married him. Out of nowhere, she goes, I bet he's got yeah. a big dick too, huh? And then, and then she keeps talking to me. And she uh, she spent 20 minutes calling this re- this weird spot. And then the promoter came downstairs and he's like, okay, Shauna, you're a baby face. Mickey, you're a tweener. Um, you're a heel talking to her. And Melissa's like... Um, I guess, uh, no, I have to be babyface because I have gimmicks to sell. Oh, my God. I was like, all right, whatever. 
<laughs> so I kept ignoring her and she just kept on and on and on. She was putting down other guys in the locker room, calling them ugly or fat, like just being really childish. And my favorite word is cunt. And so I was like, listen here, cunt, shut the fuck up. And she goes, oh, I really don't like that word. I was like, that is my favorite word. Cunt, 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 and she got upset and I told her, I said, just shut up. You're digging yourself a hole. Shut up. And then she came up to me. She's like, no, this is how we're going to start off the match. And she pulls off her shirt and she's got little more like little light, faint little marks on her chest. And she's like, I was in a battle royal last night with like 20 other guys. And I almost didn't make it out alive. And I've got <laughs> mark. She's like, so I'm going to help you out talking to me. I said, okay, how are you helping me out? I she goes, her. when we start the match, I, fucking love her, right? I want, I'm going to give you a chop and then you're going to chop me back and I'm going to roll out of the ring and sell it. Like it just absolutely killed me. And I'm going to pull off my shirt. And when they see the marks, they're going to think you're an absolute animal. I'm going to get you over as a monster. I said, okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, you and know, the whole time. Hey, look how good that, that's great time. for you. Though. You use the rub, right? Huh? I, I said, hey, I mean, that's great for you. You could really use the rub. I mean, she's I guess, basically a celebrity, you know? right? Yeah. And then she was talking about, like, she just kept running her mouth. Well, before we go out to the curtain, she's like, okay, guys, remember, I'm the baby face. <laughs> Shawnee goes out to the curtain. She's a pretty little blonde haired girl. You know, people are going to think, yay. And she gets on a microphone and she starts, you know, cutting her promo and the crowd's chanting her name. And then they chanted mine and Melissa out of nowhere in the locker. She goes, well, I guess I'm going to have to be healed now. And just stormed off. And she was next to go out. And it really kind of, I was just like, that's it. I'm fucking done. And then as she gets ready to go out, she goes, Oh, remember I hit hard. So don't be afraid to hit me back, but don't be upset if I hit you back harder. Oh, said, no, okay. which one is she? She's the one in the blue or the one in the gray. Uh, let me see the video. Hold on. And when it pops back up, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, she's the one in the gray. Okay, just making sure. I, I love just her. Make, yeah. So she calls this spot. She calls this spot, get ready to come up, and she fucks it up herself. It's her spot she called and she fucked it up. And then... Isn't that uh, the worst? I, <laughs> right? And then I told her to hit me, and literally she like... Uh, you'll see it. It was it was super lame, and it just it was just enough to tick me off. And I'm literally screaming at her throughout the match. Fight back! Now I'm hitting her hard in really safe places. I'm not I'm not trying to kill her by any means, but I need her to smarten up. If you're going to talk this shit in the locker room, be able to back it up in the ring, or at least be good enough to where nobody gives a shit. And it was just she was a disaster. And then after the match, I go downstairs and Sean is right there and she thanks me for the match. I thank her. But this Melissa girl is nowhere to be found. She went and hit herself in a cubby hole. And then when I went into that little cubby hole, she's on the floor, like on sitting her ass on the floor with her arms all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> Ball, like snot and tears and everything, just like the most hideous sight you've ever seen. And I walk in there and she's like, I think you broke my nose. And I was like, fuck you, bitch. Like, I just went off on her. And she like kept talking about herself and apologizing. And, and I told her basically just to fucking leave wrestling, do us all a favor, just fucking quit or become a rat and do, you know, at least provide a service for wrestlers. Um, hey, 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 hey. no rat hey. came in here. No rat there is no rat shaming. They serve a purpose. <laughs> they do. They I, do. I am friends with a lot of rats. They serve a damn purpose. They know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah. never stepped in and I knew about red. Like you'll see okay. at the opening spot, it, it looks like it looks like dolphins trying to fuck out of water. It's just terrible. And it's just terrible. I um, love shitty matches, so like I'm <laughs> so appreciating this right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> any match of mine's pretty shitty, so <laughs> you can have hours of amusement. I disagree with that, but no, I mean, yeah, I was, I was gonna say there I was are some. The interview was brutal as hell, and I like brutality. Like my whole shit is like realism. If you make me, if you make me question, like, oh shit, did that really just happen, or is that real heat? Then I like it. Yeah. Like I had, um, I was working this gentleman, my boy Moose. We were working in Pennsylvania. This gentleman, I know Moose. And fucking, we were beating the shit out of each other. We got to the locker room, and the fucking promoter, like the promoter and the boys, were there, ready to separate us. And we're like, "What the fuck?" They're like, "What happened out there?" 
We're like, what? What are you guys talking about? They thought like we just started fighting. They're like, you guys started shooting. We're like, yeah, that's how we work. We shoot on each other. Like, we don't have to call a match. If you can't fucking shoot, you shouldn't be a wrestler, dude. Protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I got my ass whooped a lot when I first started wrestling, especially in training. I trained for a year and a half and got my ass whooped on a on a daily but fucking basis. It's what you're supposed to do. You got to build up that tough skin and be able to take it and give it. Yeah, your body, your body got to build that. You got to build that callus. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, just wait. You, she just. <laughs> do you have that one person with, like, like? You you know it's a good person, nice person, but they're not such a great wrestler. And when yeah. you hear you got to work them, you just cringe. Yeah, yeah. Can you share that 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 person if you don't mind? I don't because, like you said, they're, they're a great person and they are a friend. It's just <laughs> uh, I don't know. this is just not their calling. Um, <laughs> and you can't tell them that. Bless their heart. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Like I, 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 I try to let them know. Like it's not. I, I got to tell argument over an RKO and a stunner. And that yeah. point, it's like, dude, you should not be in here. The, the she, one? That's that spot. That's that spot. She just. I don't know what she was fucking doing. She just. Oh, she just seriously well, right. fucked it up. I was in the middle of rolling, so I looked away for a second. <laughs> no, she. It's not well. a big deal. She just like she was supposed to come running into. Me and and actually hit me. Yeah, see, hit me. Oh yeah, she like chest bumped you. Threw her hands up. Yeah, she chest bumped me, and she was supposed to actually hit me. And then she like was supposed to duck under the one and start lighting me up, and she didn't do that. And like this, that's the spot she spent twenty minutes calling to me. You see, but like what I like right. about when I see your matches, like you're you're hitting her right there, and you can tell like either you're annoyed or you're just working really know how to work um, I, I'm pretty uh, <laughs> a combination that's the shit though it's it's realism mm-hmm. I'd rather somebody hit me and then somebody lift me I don't, I don't know I, I my favorite tag team you know was the Andersons and they just beat the shit out of people and the first woman I ever looked up to was Miss Texas and she just I watched the very first match that made me want to be a wrestler. I watched her beat up downtown Bruno at the uh, at the Louisville Gardens, and I knew then I wanted to, I wanted to do that. And oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's pretty much just like I keep hitting her and telling her she better hit me back, and then she barely anything else. And then she tried to get the referee to uh, to call the match. She because she claimed I broke her nose. No, but oh, I didn't God. even touch her or no, I head butted her in her in the widow's peak. And the referee just looked at me. I said, You call the match, I'll kill you. So yeah. she didn't call the match. <laughs> but I know I know I've known that referee for about seven years now. So uh, we got a couple questions in the uh in the chat right now. Uh so okay. uh one is and I, I can uh Mickey, do you still wrestle from extra I can never pronounce his name. I've tried. But Mickey do you It's still okay. Wrestle? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I still wrestle. I don't think any wrestler actually ever fully walks away from it. It's it's a everybody wonders what the worst drug in wrestling is, but it is wrestling. Wrestling is the worst drug. Um, so I still wrestle. Yeah, when when you told me like uh, what was it a couple months ago that you were done or uh, like you know for one reason or another, I was just like, yeah, that's that's gonna last for as long as that's gonna last. Well, you know what I mean? it it was basically my priorities at that time. Um, I had a lot of family issues going on. I needed to fix, um, and I couldn't do that and still wrestle. So I wanted I. My kids come first before everything and anything, so I took some time off to fix what I needed to fix to get everything back in order. And I came back. I've never, ever, ever, ever used the word retire. One, I don't have a career to retire from, and two, retiring means you're done indefinitely. And there's only one person that can keep saying they're retired and coming back. And that's because he's the fucking man. So, that Jay Z, Terry Park. Wow, cool. I, I, well, I, I was going to say Bunker Flair. I was going with Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah. 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 Touche. Touche. Uh, here's another question. Uh, worst pain, childbirth or, or breaking your leg? Childbirth? That fucking, I had a 10 pound baby I was trying to shoot out of a little bit of fucking oh. hole for 21 fucking hours. Fuck that. Um, oh. But it's so worth it, the, but still. Leg again. Huh? I said, so you would take the leg again over, over childbirth? I would say that, but you know what? The you get pain I got a beautiful pain baby out of the childbirth, pain. so I probably take the childbirth, even though it was worth pain. Oh, I only got such, one good leg. That was such a mother answer. You have not <laughs> seen my babies; they are amazing. I make if it, if this wrestling thing don't work out, I make beautiful babies. So uh -huh. hey, <laughs> okay, we got a couple more questions here. Uh, was Ian Run actually even into punk rock? No. He always listens Terrible. to country music in the car. Awful. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. No, he always <laughs> listens to country music in the car. Um, his wife was into punk rock. She 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 liked rock, punk rock, and, and, and all that. She was a huge Avenged Sevenfold fan um, and Slipknot and all that. So, But he was uh, he always listened to country every time we were in the car. It, it was likes, almost put me to sleep. He likes Slipknot, the kids bop. Version. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, how hard? How hard was it to stay professional uh, in this match? I think that we're watching is what the question was for. What? But it's the How hard was it to to stay professional? To stay um, professional in the ring with Melissa Bencock. Yeah. Oh, it was really hard. She she just seemed like one of those girls that just was not going to get the point. And I think that's the that's the other reason I really didn't. Some people are just lost causes. And maybe in my old age, and maybe me having kids have – but do something to somebody to hurt somebody. I never want to hurt anybody, even people I fucking find annoying and that probably should be throat punched. Um but I think the professionalism that I maintained was not be, not for her more so than it was because I knew the promoter and I knew the people who were working there. And any action that one wrestler comes and, and does um, can have reaction to her and the company, you know, it loses business and loses people. And so uh, everybody should try to maintain professionalism and, and no matter what the circumstance. In the comment section. Uh, do you do you have a favorite match or that one opponent in which you like to work with because you know it's going to be a, like you just flow with that person? Do you have that one? Lefisto. Lefisto. I I've always been uh, happy with the end result and comfortable knowing that um, we can just go out there and we can walk and talk, which is what they call it. Um, or we can plan something, and I know that I'm in good hands. She's not going to do anything that could possibly end my career or my life, and she trusts me. And when you have that trust and that camaraderie with somebody else, um, it's hard to find, but Lefisto would definitely be that, that one person. You know what? Uh, CZW actually just uh, released a video actually earlier today, uh, a video of, uh, I think it's a highlight reel of you versus Lefisto, too. Yeah, was really that was a occasion. fun match. That was a real fun match. Uh, brutal, but fun. I think, uh, yeah, she's probably one of my favorite people to work with. She's so right up there with Ian Rotten, right? Who? <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. But do, you that have, guy. do you have that opponent or person that you always work with that always pops you? Oh, um, <laughs> oh you would ask me this. We all uh, have that person. <laughs> we we do have that that person. Uh, usually, I try to be that person where I, I I say stupid things when I wrestle just to get a reaction out of people. Like I, I'm I quote Step Brothers a lot, um, <laughs> an anchor man. But I say I say some of the most stupidest shit just to pop people. Um, I think as far as wrestling people that have popped me. Um, Tessa Blanchard was was pretty funny and fun to be hang around with and be around. 
No, I mean during. I mean in the ring though, like in the ring. Yeah. Like, during the match. Oh, that's you. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, because she would retaliate and say the most stupid things back. She can keep up with me on my sense of humor, and that's really hard to do. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I love that. You no, know, after you said that, after you said that you watch Step Brothers and you talk shit in the ring like that, I, I just can't like see you two like sitting across from each other without thinking you just going, "I'm gonna fill a pillowcase full of bars of soap." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I might have looked at her and said, "I'm not calling Robert Dad, even if there's a fire." <laughs> You're like what? You're a grown man, Brennan. I wouldn't expect you to call him Dad. <laughs> you had this crazy look in your eye, and at one point in time, you looked at me and said, "Let's get it on." Oh, I'm so not a raper. That was about the fighting. I'm so not a raper. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. Does Mickey Knuckles have any stories about right. TNA Impact? Uh, I I could tell you about the first time I went. It was really fun. Um, I had known most of the guys that work at TNA because they would always pass through IWA or I'd see them. Um, I knew uh, you know AJ and Homicide and Hernandez and all them, and so. When I got the call to go, first off, I thought it was a rib. I end up, I told them, I said, "Oh, I'm, I'm have a bad reception. Let me call you right back." So I got their number, and when I called them back, sure, it was, it was Terry Taylor of uh, TNA, and he was telling me that they had this taping that he wanted me to come down for, and I actually got the job by accident. Um, Terry Taylor was booked at a show, and I was there, and I tore my lumbar muscle the night before. And missed with against mischief, and I went ahead and tried to wrestle the next day, and, and couldn't bend over, and I, it, it fucking sucked. And he noticed that, and he was like, "Are you hurt?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And then he found out later what it was, and I think he called me because of that show with Ed Schumann. And when I went in, uh, I got off the plane, and they had sent a car for me, and I saw a couple of the other girls that I knew, and uh, invited them to ride along with, because I didn't know that you have to you had to transport yourself from the airport to the building. And so we get there and um, I have to wait for Terry or Jeff and Jeff comes walking down the steps and he's like, you must be Mickey. And I said, yeah. And he's walking with AJ. And he's like, this guy was claiming that he knew you last night. And I was like, Oh, he does. And I said, hi to AJ. And Jeff Jarrett goes, I heard you can take an ass whooping. So, well, if that's what you want. Yeah. He goes, I heard you can give it back. And I was like, well, yeah, Absolutely. Um, and then we start talking, and then Hernandez and D are there, and right in front of Jeff Jarrett, they walk up there like, did you bring that Kentucky Kush? And I was like, no, this is my first day on the job. I didn't think that would be smart. Um, and so pretty much the girls didn't like me. I didn't, I didn't really get along with most of the girls. I hung out with most of the guys, and then security would sneak me out and take me on the rides in the park. While I was waiting to do whatever I was supposed to be doing and then sneak me back in whenever they would hear me on the on the comm. Um, and then after the Mike Levy situation, I showed up at tapings and I had a huge knot still in a black eye and, and my forehead was kind of swollen and slow. And uh, Jeff Jarrett told me he thought it was the greatest thing in the world. So, uh, but no, TNA was pretty relaxed. It was just a lot of hurry up and then wait. And that's the only thing I hated about it. Um, it was pretty fun. Booker T was doing his own commentary in the back, um, and he was hysterical. Oh, you mean old Black Snow coming in with the commentary, though? No. <laughs> what? Hi, I, hi, I'm Black Friend Allen. How you doing, Mickey? Hi, Black Friend Allen. Affirmative Alan. action, Allen. What's up? What's up? Sorry, I was on another podcast. That's why I wasn't here earlier. Sorry. Oh, oh boo! Oh, you're just a co-host. I'm not important. Yeah, see, you made Mickey feel unimportant. It's okay, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. I, listen, 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 listen. Listen, I wasn't booked. You know, Vinny didn't book me. I wasn't booked. Oh, so he did I, a stamp. I, 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 I can't show up because I wasn't booked. I don't come to shows I wasn't, I wasn't booked. booked for. It's old vet rules. Hey, old listen, vet rules. you were totally important. You were the first person I am having on the show who has their own Wikipedia page. So. Who, me? Yeah. Oh wow! Awesome. I have a Wikipedia page. No, no. You do. So I have to go visit it later. See how but, I um, actually live. What, what hooked you into wrestling? What got you into wrestling? 
Um, when I was younger, my mom was a single mom, and she uh, she was a paramedic, and she would always be on the road or uh, yeah, driving the ambulance and stuff, and almost never home. And I didn't have really a dad, and my older sister was dating dating a wrestler, um, which I found out later was still training at OVW. But he would make it sound like he was king shit, of course, and that he was the best. And in order to, um, I guess, get my sister's pants, he would offer to take me and my little sister to uh, OVW to watch the show. And I remember that's when I saw Miss, Miss Texas be up downtown Bruno. Um, what are you pulling up here? Anyways, but that's what kind of hooked me into it was the fact that, you know, bull, bull, no, Nakano and Luna Vachon and, and Miss Texas and Lula and May and you know that there's these strong women that could fight anybody, man or woman, and it was socially acceptable. And so that's what I found so cool was somebody could be equal and uh, belong in this world and fit in and people want to watch them and yeah. So that's what hooked me was was that match, and then I became you know a fan of Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero, um, and then I was introduced into the Japanese wrestling and the AAA, and just kind of fell in love with that. Wait, who does it say I was trained by? Started Chris Hero. training to become Chris Hero, Mark Wolf, and Bull Pain. Yeah, that was a few of them. King of the Death Match. King of the Death Match. I think when I when I just like Vinny just brought me in, I think I heard the tail end of your talking about TNA and stuff. Uh -huh. um, uh, I I remember where I first saw you in TNA. I was like, "Whoa, this shit is gonna be epic!" And then like <laughs> they they stopped using. You. I'm like, "What the hell happened?" <laughs> I thought she was gonna come and step up. Right? No, no, we can't have fun. I can't. No, not at all. So that's crazy. I'll have to go on there and read it. Yeah, it's just pain in death. But I actually did not notice this until like right before we decided to go live. Huh. Oh, he does good research. He, he starts does. looking right before the person comes on. <laughs> Mickey, I don't know if you've already like mentioned this or not. Have you ever been to Japan? No. Would you ever like to like go? I had like opportunities to go, but Ian said that like Pondo got me four or five opportunities to go, and every time Ian said that I wasn't ready, I didn't get to go. You weren't ready to, to work a match in Japan? That's what Ian said. Uh, I mean, it, isn't it pretty much like you're ready as soon as somebody, you know, offers you? Like, as soon as somebody, like, makes you an offer, I would think that's an indication that you're ready. I think if they would have said, mm -hmm. hey, we want to bring her over and you... I would have gone, but because the, the offer was only to really go over. So. No, 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 no. no. I got you. Hold on, I, I got a better one for you. Don't worry, Mickey. It's the, it's the early. Usually, when we have a female on, about 15 minutes deep, Alan starts putting himself on mute, and you. Here and there, hear heavy breathing. Oh, like he just did. Like he just did. He just went on mute right now. Give it. Like, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> that means he's getting the lotion ready. What do you think he's doing? We don't know. Stop, stop, we don't... stop giving female guests a bad impression of me, all right? What? No, no, you do that yourself, Alan. We just point it out. That's all. Listen, I, I, I and don't worry, we do the same thing when there's male guests too. It's, it's not just it's not just for the female guests. Listen, I am a respectable young gentleman. I am single. I am six foot one. Uh, my bank account. <laughs> None of those things are true. Mm, no, probably well, no. not. <laughs> All right, so Mickey, what do you have? Yeah, what do you have coming up? Um, what do you have coming up? Um, I got some girl fight shows coming up. Pondo's been running a. Uh, would you give me this? Just, just stop it. Just go away. Um, got my little sister Fonda's... cracking up in the background. Fun <laughs> <laughs> is running girl fight. Like, so nothing happening. What's going on a date with him? Awful, Alan. Continue. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Great. Continue. <laughs> 
I got a few shows coming up. Uh, uh, there's other talks too for some big things this year, but I'm not going to let them out until they uh, they're finalized. What you said. Um, I get to wrestle in the dark out. in Texas in a death match, so that's cool. In February. Oh, yes. Nice, nice, nice. And where can we find you also, and keep up with you, like on your social? Do you have social media and stuff? I know everybody. Does. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. You can just send me a message and tell me how how much you hate me, and that's fine. I get those a lot, though. So. That's awesome. I mean, that's how we start talking, right? That's how we start talking. Actually, even after we start talking, I got I got uh, accused of. The hell is that? I was like, how did I fool him? And they're like, we saw the text messages. You made it sound like you didn't care if people don't like you and blame you for everything. And I was like, I don't. You all can't say shit that's worse than I say to myself. Um, yeah. So well, I wait, call wait. myself a fat piece of shit every day. Wait, wait, but but who who said that to you? Though? Girl named, uh, it wasn't Heather, hold on. I forget her name. It's been so long ago. And I've had 22 concussions. Hold on. Let me, let me check. No, it's not going to let me. Um, I don't know. Some girl out of the blue sent me a message. I've read it in my other folder. That is awesome. I, I love those messages. Yeah, the weird random that. messages. No way. You may have him fold, but you don't have me fold. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Well, Mickey, you thought it was her, but it was I all along. <laughs> well, well, Mickey, it was me, Austin. It was me all along. I think I speak for everyone when I say you have all of us fooled. So you're in good company here, because we're all. Uh, I don't want to fool anybody. I just, I just. No, no, no. I'm it's, not a fool. I'm just because people want to know skeevy. the truth. I'll tell them the truth. I'm just a skeevy stoner. <laughs> skeevy stoner. There's nothing wrong being a stoner, man. <laughs> so I, I, well, first of all, I want to say I want to thank you again for coming on because, like, uh, I thought it was important that people got to you know bullshit with you and see how you are, like you know, normally because I'm a dork. Yeah. Yeah, you you you're a really big dork. You're huge dork. I am a really big dork. I like baseballs and Star Wars and video games and yeah. Thank well, you. I mean, you, you made me feel us. better about myself. Thank Why would you go and do that? Why would you go and make Chris feel better about himself? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that's what I do. I'm like the ugly girl in the popular group. I just make people feel better about themselves. <laughs> Chris, that's not true. That's Alan's the ugly girl. Exactly. Aww. That's my job. Don't be taking that away from me. Yeah, he's the ugly You know what? Player. You're going to the unemployment line. I took your job. Is it because he's They black? took my oh, job. He took one. my job! <laughs> he took his job! <laughs> Have you all played that video game? <laughs> South Park's uh, Fractured Butthole? I have not bought it yet. Is you it should. Worth it? It's so much Yeah, fun. it is. I've, I've heard so really good fun. things. Isabel Smothers. Or Isabella, I should say. Isn't that Tracy the Smothers daughter? <sighs> no. no <that's> <laughs> are you, what is this Isabella Smothers? Okay, so when when E was getting booked for JCW, I was trying to get on the roster as well, and they allowed me to be a ref. They weren't into female wrestlers, so they allowed me to be a ref. And I would oftentimes ref matches for Tracy when Tracy was wrestling to Jeff Tony, which was her big baby face. But see, Tracy has a tendency to go into the crowd would assault Tracy and nobody would be able to do anything about it because Clowns is really big on not putting your hands on the jugglers no matter what because they don't want to get sued. I didn't know this and I was roughing a match between Tracy and Tony and they went out in the crowd and I went with them and then some girl pushed back security and she was a huge broad and she had a, a little sharp ring on her finger and she punched Tracy in the face and split his lip completely wide open and he started bleeding. And the next thing I knew, I had this girl jacked up against a brick wall and had punched her, you know, and went about refing the rest of the match. And when I got in the back, the uh, Corporal Robinson was like, oh, you're going to get fired. You're going to get in trouble. They're going to sue you, blah, blah, blah. And so I went to talk to uh, Jay and Shaggy, and they were like, uh, do you, you want to be Tracy's mother's daughter? That way you can keep an eye on him when he's on the outside, make sure nobody assaults him, blah, blah, blah. So oh, wait a my, minute. That was you? You just got that? 
Holy like, shit. Where were you for this whole conversation? That's why. I- no, I was <laughs> listening. I was. I, I felt this was going somewhere else. Nope, it went right was going somewhere else. So they made me Tracy Smothers' illegitimate daughter, and that began the uh, Isabella Smothers. And then later on, Tracy couldn't wrestle in JCW for a while, so they paired me with Bull Payne and did this love triangle gimmick. And that lasted for a little bit, and then they brought Tracy back, and then Tracy burned the Confederate flag last time he was there, so they have no need for Isabella Smothers anymore. So... But yeah, yeah. I had a tag team I, par- uh, partner with his other daughter, and we called ourselves the STDs. STDs. Yeah, what? and we had a finisher called AIDS uh, that we never hit on anybody. We don't even know what it was, but apparently, whatever it is, you don't count. There's, there's a team of my exes. It's good that you never hit it. But no, I, 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 I started watching JCW when I first got into wrestling, and I was, mm-hmm. I loved it. And Vinny, you give me shit for it. It's like, no, don't you bring that juggalo shit over to this channel. I was like, but come on, man. Comedy. JWO. I remember I remember one time uh Violent J came up to me. And he's like, We need you to do something really raunchy. I said, Okay, what is it? He's like, I don't know, come up with it. I said, Do you want me to ask your permission or just do it? And he's like, just do it. So I went around the locker room asking anybody if they had a condom and I got a condom. I think it was from Jimmy Jacobs and I put lotion in the condom and tied it off. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with this. And I, and I have multiple layers when I wear clothes and I put it in between two layers in, in the crotch and went out to the ring and bull pain starts cutting this promo and I'm going, oh, Bully Poo, I'm so in love with you, blah, 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 blah. And Bull's like, no, we're keeping on the down low. Nobody knows about it on the promo. And I said, well, it's funny that you say that because remember two weeks ago when we had sex and I flung out the condom and had it dangling out like you left something. And he smacked it and it went into the crowd and the crowd split like the fucking Red Sea and <laughs> did not go anywhere near that condom for the rest of the show. They really believed it was a used condom with sperm in it. I pulled out of my vagina. So when I got in the back, <laughs> I went up to Jay or Violent Jay and I was like, was that raunchy enough for you? Yeah. He's like, I can't even talk to you right now. <laughs> he just walked away. But that is awesome. Yeah. Um, that does search with that bro. <laughs> No, I that that's crazy. No, no, I honestly that's crazy that that was you because I do I remember specifically the whole storyline that played out when you first was named as like Tracy's uh, daughter because I remember there was a whole thing where you were caught hooking up with one of the uh, the rappers Boondocks. that was said Boondocks. B- Boondocks, yeah, yeah. Because I remember because even I could, I could t- I could tell it was like fake how it was set up because it's literally. Like, Tracy opens the door, and you're on your knees, and just like, what are you doing with my daughter? And I'm just like, okay, this is clearly fake. <laughs> so. What kind of shows does Mickey Knuckles watch in her free time? I have, I have very, very limited free time. Um, I love Key and Peele. I love watching Key and Peele. They're hysterical. Um, I'm more of into a comedy thing. I do watch Supernatural. Some weird like that. Um, I don't know. I don't watch anything once. You're on a two-hour road, two road trip. And on a two-hour road trip. Oh, Golden, Golden Girl. Playing. I will watch Golden Girls because oh, Betty White is my idol. I would fuck this shit out of Betty White. Think, wait, 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 Betty White? Come on. Yes. I'm taking. Oh, I'm man. taking Blanche all day. Betty, Betty White is your idol. I. The woman who hits people in the face with, with, with fucking baseball bats wrapped with barbed wire. Betty White's right. Well, when I when I get old and senile, I want to be a combination of Betty White, Jack Nicholson, and Gary Busey. Jack now, now, Vinny, you well, say that like you don't think Betty White would pull out a barbed wire baseball bat if WWE paid her to. Betty you know White what? I awesome. would have a drink and a smoke with Betty White. I want to. That's what I want to meet Betty White, and yeah. 
uh, Mickey, uh, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna close out the show in another like uh, three minutes. Um, so, is there any upcoming shows of yours uh, coming up that we should know about? Any matches you're working? Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm wrestling with Dark in Texas in February. I accepted an offer to go be in a deathmatch tournament out in California later this year. Um, I got a couple things in the work right now, thanks to Madman Pondo, um, that hopefully I'll have some big news to share with you all soon. Awesome. Okay. What I what uh, I said, uh, it was great having you on. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, and, you know, if you ever have free time, uh, well, feel free to We can maybe watch the matches together and critique them. Absolutely. Let's do that next time. Let's let's set something up. But I, I'll be drinking beer while we do it. So it's so much more fun here. I will smoke. We'll, we'll fucking. There we go. Out. We'll all get wasted <laughs> in our own way. Airtime. Sounds great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, thank you. Having you back. Thank you. And keep making fun of me. It's hysterical. Only when you're here, though. We'll wait till okay. you stop by. It's not fair okay. to do it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, surprisingly, after being a complete dickhead to her, Mickey and I are pretty friendly now. She's even sang my praises once or twice on the internet, which was nice of her. She's been through a lot, and reflecting back on the information I have now, taking into account her age at the time of breaking into the industry, and who was quote-unquote guiding her, I do think that she was misled, and at the time a product of her environment. But she's a lot more normal and subdued now, and I do genuinely think that she's a good person. And dare I even say, a sweetheart, as well as a giant fucking dork. I, I say that with love, though. It's, it's a positive thing. It's not a bad thing. So why don't you go ahead and drop her a follow on her Twitter account. Link's in the comment section below. And also, you could just look at what I'm showing you on the screen now. That also works. Either one. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.